some examples of, um, you know, lawmakers who've been talking about COVID, but I am curious, where has President Trump been in offering public leadership on this topic of the coronavirus, especially as we've seen cases surge? We haven't seen the president make any sort of public comments um, or even tweets about this surge in cases. So I'm curious what sort of examples you have. Yeah, uh, quite a bit. I mean, he's created the greatest testing system in the world. He gave um, a press conference about two weeks ago, I believe, on the vaccine, uh, which he has done at warp speed because he's torn down bureaucratic barriers. He's been hard at work. He's done, I don't know how many uh, coronavirus task force briefings from this podium, um, but the work he's done speaks for itself. The fact that now the case fatality rate in this country is 2%. Um, it was 6% in April. And um, what that means is it's a, a testament to our therapeutics. Another thing that happened recently, in fact, mid-November got almost no attention, but it's again a testament um, to the president is uh, the two new therapeutics. They are renditions of, mon one is a monoclonal antibody body. Another one is a Regeneron therapeutic, um, and these two therapeutics are given to people with mild to moderate COVID cysts. Uh, symptoms that are at high risk for se uh, severe COVID or hospitalization. So the fact that we've got to the point where we now have therapeutics, we can give you in advance to try to prevent you uh, from going to a hospital. And we've sent out uh, 169,000 vials of one and 36,000 vials of another just in a few weeks. He's hard at work at this with the task force behind the scenes. And when we talk about you know, his public leadership, um, just on COVID generally, I think it's a fitting time Given your question to note, Dr. Fauci now says that we should keep the schools open. He said that this Sunday. This is something the president has said for months. Um, it caused me to go back to July and look at one of my briefing books um, from July 16th, 2020. Um, and what I found in there was this. Um, the science was always on our side about keeping schools open way back in July. It's being acknowledged now, but in July you had Dr. Redfield saying, unlike flu, kids are not driving the transmission cycle. You had Dr. Atlas, who's been a leading voice on keeping the schools open, saying everyone else in the Western world, our peer nations are doing it. We can do it. This was back in July. We had a study from the Netherlands about few reports of infections from schools that had stayed open. This was back in July. You had a Yale School of Public Health professor named Albert Koh saying that the bottom line is the impacts of COVID-19 on children is minimal or very low compared to other groups. There was a Lancet quote to that same effect. This was back in July when the president was saying, keep the schools open. I'm looking at the science. It's detrimental to keep kids out of school. But what were Democrats saying when the president was following the science? Here's what Democrats were saying. You had Governor Gavin Newsom say this. I'm not taking pressure from Trump on opening schools. You had Governor Cuomo saying it's not up to the president about opening schools as schools were shut down. You had Mayor de Blasio, who interestingly reversed himself this week, and now kids can go back to school. But back in July, when the science was on our side, he was saying what we won't do is ignore the science and recklessly charge ahead like our president, who was always following the science. You had Jennifer Rubin tweeting that now he wants to kill your kids. I'm not sure how that's responsible reporting. And then you had Anderson Cooper saying that he actually just doesn't care about kids at all, nor the health of their teachers and parents. Um, and you had the American Federation of Teachers and the National Education Association railing against the president as well. The president's followed the science. He's also kept in mind we have a constitution, and he will be unashamed and always advocating for the science and the best interests of the children of this country. Thank you very much.